I just want to celebrate another game they're winning. I just want to celebrate. Sens win 4-3 in overtime over the Winnipeg Jets. Seriously? Two Saturdays in a row the Sens beat the Jets? To what do I owe this surprise? I really don't get it. In Ottawa's last 10 games, they're 3-7. and seven. They have a win over the hapless Ducks, because who doesn't? And two wins over the Jets? Last week's win was a bit of a fluke, as they capitalized on a poor performance from Laurent Brassois. But Brassois was in goal again for this one, and the Sens really earned it by outplaying the Jets for the majority of the night. It's not very often you could say the Sens were the better team, and they won. You could do that last night. It is time the Sens find a level of consistency though. How do you beat the Jets twice in a week, and then lose to a team like the Red Wings twice in two weeks? That's the next step. You beat the good teams, now take care of business against the weaker ones too. I also have to say, what a roller coaster of a game. I was fired up early, then ready to blow a gasket for the next period and a half. Then a couple goals go in and you're feeling good. I can tell you I was ready to come on here and let loose on everyone, including the head coach. Then they score two more power play goals and make it seem like a terrible time. Thank goodness for the win. As always though, let's kick things off with lineup changes. With the Sens taking on a heavier Jets team, Guy Boucher wanted to add some size to his lineup and reverted back to the traditional 12-6 and 6 as Darren Archibald came in and Cody Golubev came out. In goal, Anders Nilsson got his fifth straight start as Craig Anderson continues to recover from an eye injury suffered on Monday. With Andy still out and hoping to make a return in Chicago on Monday, Philip Gustafson served as Nilsson's backup for the third straight game. It didn't take long for Nilsson to get some help in front of him either. Dmitry Kulikov gets sent off for a four minute high sticking penalty just over a minute in and the Sens take advantage. Stone throws a shot on goal that gets blocked. Brady picks up the rebound, fires it on goal, Brassois gets part of it, the post gets the rest, and it stays out. The puck goes into the corner and Duchesne wins a battle with Kopp. He sends a backhand pass back to Kachuk, who goes cross-ice to Stone, who one-times it by Brassois, and the Sens lead 1-0. Welcome home, Mark Stone. What a perfect start. Scored seconds into the power play and give themselves another full two minutes on the man advantage. It also didn't hurt to take a lead less than two minutes in. But then on the same power play, Dezingle turns the puck over at the Jets' blue line, Tanev races back the other way all alone, goes forehand, backhand, Roos went over Nilsson, and we're tied at one. Full disclosure, when I make these videos, I write down at least an idea of what I want to say, and I don't just turn the camera on and just say it. Well, when I was writing down what I wanted to say last night, I literally wrote, Figure out what to say, because at that point, I still didn't know what I was going to say about this goal. It's now the next morning, and I still don't know what to say. It's just so terrible. You score a goal, and on the same power play, give one up, and it completely erased the momentum you gained. Plus, it's a shorthanded goal. I can't stand those. And unfortunately, it goes from bad to worse. Kulikov plays the puck before stepping out of the box at the end of his penalty, and he goes right back in the box. With the Sens on the power play again, Tanev dumps the puck down the ice and chases after it. He picks up the puck in the Sens zone, feeds a wide open Tyler Myers in the slot, he fires one by Nilsson, and just like that, the Jets lead 2-1. Again? Are you kidding me? How the heck does Myers get that wide open? You have the power play. That means you have the extra man, which means you should be the one with a guy wide open. Not them. Three goals. All on Sen's power plays, and we're barely five and a half minutes in. Unbelievable. And the crazier thing is, although there are chances over the last 14 and a half minutes, both goalies get settled in, hold the fort, and the Jets take a 2-1 lead into the first intermission. The Sens press for the equalizer in the second, but Brassois is equal to the task every time, including on a Pajot breakaway, but finally, with about six minutes to go, the Sens break through. But before they do, the Jets think they have another goal. Brian Little jams at a bouncing puck at the side of the Sens goal, and Brady Kachuk falls down on the other side and starts sliding into the net. The puck goes to the side of Nilsson and hits Kachuk as he's sliding into the goal. The puck is somewhere under Kachuk and Nilsson, but never seems to cross the line. The NHL office understandably reviews it anyway, and determines it's not a goal. Based on other calls this year, I'm not overly surprised by that. You never actually see the puck go in, so you can't call it a goal. The Jets almost do extend their lead, but Kyle Connor airmails a glorious opportunity, keeping the Jets in front 2-1. to one. 
Those missed opportunities would prove huge, as the Sens would come down the ice and tie the game. Another Jets penalty gives the Sens another power play, and they use it to their advantage this time. The Sens work the puck around the Jets zone before Yarrow feeds to Zingle. He fires one on goal, Balsers tips it in front, it gets by Bressois, and just like that, we're tied at two. Fifteen seconds later though, Chirac keeps the puck in at the Sens line, skates down the middle, fires a shot over the glove of Nilsson, and the Jets have their one goal lead back. But the Sens challenge for offside, and upon further review, they're right. The puck goes up on its edge, comes out of the zone by enough that you can see white between the puck and the line, so the goal is called back, and we're still tied. Was a bit of a lucky one though. If the puck doesn't roll, Chirac keeps it in, and the Sens are losing. Fortunately, it stays tied at two until the third, when another Sens power play results in another Sens goal. Ryan feeds Duchesne on the back door, he bangs it in, and the Sens lead 3-2. Unfortunately though, that Myers guy would strike again. Roslevic feeds Myers, he one times one by Nilsson, and with six minutes to play, we're tied at three. And late in the period, the Jets nearly steal the win. Connor feeds Wheeler on the back door, he hesitates just long enough that it allows Nilsson to come across and make a terrific stop, keeping the Sens and Jets tied at three. Thanks to hindsight, we're able to say that was a two-point saving save. Regardless, it was at least one at the time, as the Sens and Jets head to overtime tied at three. And in the extra frame, the Sens wrap up the victory. Tierney pokes a Dezingle pass by Shifley, and the Sens move into the Jets' zone. Tierney feeds Dezingle, he dekes the equipment off of Brassois, buries the game winner, and the Sens win 4-3. Boom! I know the Jets aren't playing great right now, but that's a huge win. The Sens really owned this game. Seeing them carry the play against the top five team is encouraging. Now keep it all together and let's see what happens next year. No trading the stars. Let's just get into good news, bad news. This is one of those games where the good news could also be the bad news. And I don't do this very often, but let's start with the bad news. I have to imagine everyone knows what's coming. The Sens power play nearly cost them a game they deserve to win, and that is the bad news. Yes, they scored three power play goals, so you can't totally destroy them, but they gave up two first period shorthanded goals, and I bet you if you ask them, the whole team would tell you that that's just not acceptable. It was a bit of a weird game, and the Sens power play was a big reason for that. I have to admit, I couldn't tell you the last time I remember watching a hockey game that was 3-2 in the third period, and all five goals had come on one team's power play. Seriously, I messaged my buddy in the third period to let him know how things are going because he had to miss the game. I had to tell him it was 3-2, and that all five goals had come on Ottawa's power play. The sad thing is, it wasn't a joke either. Three Sens power play goals, and two Jet shorthanded goals. Yes, the three Sens power play goals were nice, and credit to them for going three for seven. But anytime you give up two shorthanded goals, especially in the first period, that's just a bad sign of things to come. They somehow managed to avoid being bitten by it, but they still gave up two shorties, and that is the bad news. Now, for the good news. Yes, the power play was good, and we could go there, but we already kind of touched on that in the bad news. But piggybacking off of that, sure the Sens gave up two shorthanded goals and seemed to try their best early on to give the game away. But they stuck with it and kept coming, and that is the good news. They could have folded, but they didn't. Sure they had some luck, like a rolling puck that Connor shot over the net, or a rolling puck that came just outside the blue line and cost the Jets a goal. But the Jets had two shorties in the first, and carried the lead for the majority of the first half of the game. The Sens could have packed it in, or the Jets could have rode that wave of momentum to an easy victory. But neither happened, the Sens stuck with it, were eventually able to take over the game, and pick up the win, and that is the good news. Next up, the Sens head to Chicago on Monday for a matchup with the Chicago Blackhawks. The contest would be the second and final meeting of the season between the two teams, with the Hawks winning 4-3 in overtime in the Sens season opener on October 5th in Ottawa. Since then, the Sens have had their fair share of struggles, while the Hawks, they also struggled early in the season, but have been coming on strong of late. After sitting last in the NHL earlier this season, the Hawks have climbed themselves into a tie for 10th place in the Western Conference, three points out of a playoff spot. The Hawks' 57 points are 8 ahead of the Sens. Patrick Kane has been red hot of late, posting a point in 17 straight games and assist in 16 straight games, so keeping an eye on him will be key if the Sens hope to pick up a win. See you Monday night.